Universidad Austral de Chile. Libertas Capitur. La libertad se conquista. Communicative Language Teaching. Background. The origins of Communicative Language Teaching, CLT, are to be found in the changes in the British language teaching tradition dating from the late 1960s. Until then, situational language teaching represented the major British approach to teaching English as a foreign language. In situational language teaching, language was taught by practicing basic structures in meaningful situation-based activities. This was partly a response to the sorts of criticisms the prominent American linguist Noam Chomsky had leveled at structural linguistic theory in his now classic book Syntactic Structures, 1957. Chomsky had demonstrated that the current standard structural theories of language were incapable of accounting for the fundamental characteristic of language, the creativity and uniqueness of individual sentences. British applied linguists emphasized another fundamental dimension of language that was inadequately addressed in current approaches to language teaching at that time, the functional and communicative potential of language. They saw the need to focus in language teaching on communicative proficiency rather than on mere mastery of structures. Both American and British proponents now see it as an approach, and not a method, that aims to make communicative competence the goal of language teaching develop procedures for the teaching of the four language skills that acknowledge the interdependence of language and communication its comprehensiveness thus makes it different in scope and status from any of the other approaches or methods there is no single text or authority on it nor any single model that is universally accepted as authoritative for some Communicative language teaching means little more than an integration of grammatical and functional teaching. Theory of language The communicative approach in language teaching starts from a theory of language as communication. The goal of language teaching is to develop what Himes, 1972, referred to as communicative competence. Himes coined this term in order to contrast a communicative view of language and Chomsky's theory of competence. Theory of learning. Learning activities are consequently selected according to how well they engage the learner in meaningful and authentic language use, rather than merely mechanical practice of language patterns. Design. Objectives. Pipo, 1981, discusses the following levels of objectives in a communicative approach. An integrative and content level, language as a means of expression. A linguistic and instrumental level, language as a semiotic system and an object of learning. An effective level of interpersonal relationships and conduct, language as a means of expressing values and judgments about oneself and others. A level of individual learning needs, remedial learning based on error analysis. A general educational level of extralinguistic goals, language learning within the school curriculum. Pipo 1981, page 8. These are proposed as general objectives, applicable to any teaching situation. Particular objectives for CLT cannot be defined beyond this level of specification, since such an approach assumes that language teaching will reflect the particular needs of the target learners. These needs may be in the domains of reading, writing, listening, or speaking, each of which can be approached from a communicative perspective. Curriculum or instructional objectives for a particular course would reflect specific aspects of communicative competence according to the learner's proficiency level and communicative needs. The Syllabus Discussions of the nature of the syllabus have been central in communicative language teaching. We have seen that one of the first syllabus models to be proposed was described as a notional syllabus, Wilkins 1976, which specified the semantic grammatical categories, for example, frequency, motion, location, and the categories of communicative function that learners need to express. 
the Council of Europe expanded and developed this into a syllabus that included descriptions of the objectives of foreign language courses for European adults, the situations in which they might typically need to use a foreign language, for example, travel, business, the topics they might need to talk about, for example, personal identification, education, shopping, the functions they needed language for, for example, describing something, requesting information, expressing agreement and disagreement, the notions made use of in communication, for example, time, frequency, duration, as well as the vocabulary and grammar needed. Types of learning and teaching activities. The range of exercise types and activities compatible with a communicative approach is unlimited, provided that such exercises enable learners to attain the communicative objectives of the curriculum, engage learners in communication, and require the use of such communicative processes as information sharing, negotiation of meaning, and interaction. Classroom activities are often designed to focus on completing tasks that are mediated through language or involve negotiation of information and information sharing. Little Wood, 1981, distinguishes between functional communication activities and social interaction activities as major activity types in communicative language teaching. Functional communication activities include such tasks as learners comparing sets of pictures and noting similarities and differences, working out a likely sequence of events in a set of pictures, discovering missing features in a map or picture, one learner communicating behind a screen to another learner and giving instructions on how to draw a picture or shape, or how to complete a map, following directions, and solving problems from shared clues. Social interaction activities include conversation and discussion sessions, dialogues and role plays, simulations, skits, improvisations, and debates. Learner Roles The emphasis in communicative language teaching on the processes of communication, rather than mastery of language forms, leads to different roles for learners from those found in more traditional second language classrooms. Breen and Candlin, 1980, describe the learner's role within CLT in the following terms. The role of learner as negotiator between the self, the learning process, and the object of learning, emerges from and interacts with the role of joint negotiator within the group and within the classroom procedures and activities which the group undertakes. The implication for the learner is that he should contribute as much as he gains, and thereby learn in an interdependent way. Page 110. Teacher Roles Several roles are assumed for teachers in communicative language teaching, the importance of particular roles being determined by the view of CLT adopted. Breen and Candlin, 1980, describe teacher roles in the following terms. The teacher has two main roles, the first role is to facilitate the communication process between all participants in the classroom, and between these participants and the various activities and texts. The second role is to act as an independent participant within the learning teaching group. Needs Analyst the CLT teacher assumes a responsibility for determining and responding to learner language needs. Counselor. Another role assumed by several CLT approaches is that of counselor, similar to the way this role is defined in community language learning. In this role, the teacher counselor is expected to exemplify an effective communicator seeking to maximize the meshing of speaker intention and hearer interpretation, through the use of paraphrase, confirmation, and feedback. Group Process Manager CLT procedures often require teachers to acquire less teacher-centered classroom management skills. It is the teacher's responsibility to organize the classroom as a setting for communication and communicative activities. The Role of Instructional Materials A wide variety of materials have been used to support communicative approaches to language teaching. 
Unlike some contemporary methodologies, such as community language learning, practitioners of communicative language teaching view materials as a way of influencing the quality of classroom interaction and language use. Materials thus have the primary role of promoting communicative language use. We will consider three kinds of materials currently used in CLT and label these text-based, task-based, and realia. Procedure. For Nichioro and Brumfit offer a lesson outline for teaching the function making a suggestion for learners in the beginning level of a secondary school program that suggests that CLT procedures are evolutionary rather than revolutionary. Presentation of a brief dialogue or several mini dialogues, preceded by a motivation, relating the dialogue situation, s to the learner's probable community experiences, and a discussion of the function and situation, people, roles, setting, topic, and the informality or formality of the language which the function and situation demand. At beginning levels, where all the learners understand the same native language, the motivation can well be given in their native tongue. Oral practice of each utterance of the dialogue segment to be presented that day, entire class repetition, half class, groups, individuals, generally preceded by your model. If many dialogues are used, engage in similar practice. Questions and answers based on the dialogue topics and situation itself. Inverted WH, or, or questions. Questions and answers related to the students' personal experiences but centered around the dialogue theme. Study one of the basic communicative expressions in the dialogue or one of the structures which exemplify the function. You will wish to give several additional examples of the communicative use of the expression or structure with familiar vocabulary in unambiguous utterances or mini dialogues using pictures, simple real objects, or dramatization, to clarify the meaning of the expression or structure. Learner discovery of generalizations or rules underlying the functional expression or structure. This should include at least four points, its oral and written forms, the elements of which it is composed, for example how about plus verb, plus sing, its position in the utterance, its formality or informality in the utterance, and in the case of a structure, its grammatical function and meaning. Oral recognition, interpretative activities, 2 to 5 depending on the learning level, the language knowledge of the students, and related factors. Oral production activities, proceeding from guided to freer communication activities. Copying of the dialogues or mini dialogues or modules if they are not in the class text. Sampling of the written homework assignment, if given. Evaluation of learning, oral only, for example how would you ask your friend to, and how would you ask me to. Conclusion Communicative language teaching is best considered an approach rather than a method. Thus although a reasonable degree of theoretical consistency can be discerned at the levels of language and learning theory, at the levels of design and procedure there is much greater room for individual interpretation and variation than most methods permit. It could be that one version among the various proposals for syllabus models, exercise types, and classroom activities may gain wider approval in the future, giving communicative language teaching a status similar to other teaching methods. On the other hand, divergent interpretations might lead to homogeneous subgroups. Universidad Austral de Chile, Libertas Capitur, la libertad se conquista.